Welcome back everyone. Hope you are doing well. In today's video, we will try to understand the concept of demand forecasting and we will learn how to do static forecasting on Excel. Let's start. Understanding the demand forecasting. Imagine you are in charge of a business and you face a common challenge fluctuating demand. Some days it's too much, others too little. How do you navigate this roller coaster? That's where demand forecasting steps in. It's the art of prediction, a powerful tool used by the businesses worldwide to anticipate future demand. While we don't have a crystal ball, we have something even better. That's called data. Demand forecasting involves crunching historical data to make educated guesses about what the future holds. It helps businesses optimize inventory, streamline production and ultimately keep customer happy. Businesses can also make this informed decision, reduce waste and maximize profitability by using the demand forecasting. Let's check out various methods of demand forecasting. Now let's talk methods. Demand forecasting can use historical data, market research, statistical model and even machine learning algorithm. Different methods suit different industry and scenarios. For instance, a fashion retailer might use trend analysis while a tech company could lean towards quantitative method. Basically, there are two broad categories of demand forecasting. One is qualitative, another is quantitative and these category has various methods in it. Today we will cover variant of time series analysis. Before that, are you ready to supercharge your supply chain career? Dive into the ultimate supply chain interview guide. Your ticket to mastering the art of async supply chain interviews and securing your dream job. Do check out our website and link in the description. Going ahead. Time series forecasting is all about predicting future values based on the past data points. It's powerful tool used across various industries from finance to retail. In time series forecasting, the data is organized in chronological order. This means each data point is associated with a specific time or date. It could be daily stock price, monthly revenue or even yearly weather patterns. Time series data typically consists of three main components. One, level, second trend and third seasonality. Level is de-seasonalized demand. The trend represents the long-term movement whether it is upward or the downward. Seasonality captures regular patterns. By using these three, a demand pattern could be of three types. First, multiplicative, where all three are multiplied. Second, additive, where all three are getting added. And the third one is mixed, where sum of level and trend is getting multiplied by the seasonality factor. So now, the time series analysis could be done by two ways on all of these patterns. First is static and second is adaptive. In static method, it is assumed that the estimates of level trend and seasonality do not vary as new demand is observed. In this case, we estimate each of these parameter based on historical data and then use the same value for all the future forecasts. While as in adaptive forecasting, the estimate of level trend and seasonality are updated after each demand observation. The main advantage of adaptive forecasting is the estimates incorporate all new data that are observed. Various examples of adaptive forecasting is moving average forecast, hold method, hold winter method, etc. In today's video, we will learn how to model a static forecasting model in Excel and solve it for the future forecast. So let's go to the Excel. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Excel example of static forecasting. Here we will be checking out that how we can model the problem of static forecasting and how we can get our forecasted value based on static forecasting. Let's start. So before starting, there are certain assumptions. First, the kind of demand which we are thinking here is a mixed kind of demand for which the level trend will sum up and it will be multiplied by the seasonal factor. So in this case, the formula for the forecast would be this one where the forecast for any given month will be multiplied by the level and the T plus L times of the trend and the whole sum of this multiplied by the seasonality factor. Here we have the details for all these values. Let's start. Okay, so we have a data from a company which has demand for past three years. As we can see, the column D has the demand for past three years and they are recording their data in quarters. So for the first year, second quarter, the demand was 8,000 and the same way for the fourth year, first quarter, the demand was 41,000. If you closely look on this demand data, you will be able to see that the demand is increasing from quarter two of a certain year till the quarter first of the next year. And again, there is a dip and then again it increased till the first quarter of next year and 
this repeats so in our static forecast the assumption is that the level trend and seasonality factor do not change basically so that is why this data is perfect for our static demand calculation in order to calculate any demand in time series model we need to know three things one is level another one is trend and third one is seasonality factor first we will try to get the data for level and trend and then we will go for the seasonality factor so to get the value of level and trend we have to deseasonalize the demand so what deseasonalizing the demand means deseasonalized demand represents the demand that would have been observed in the absence of seasonal fluctuation in this example how does this fits let's say in a particular period you have a demand from 8000 to 34000 so the total sum of the demand is 78000 so in this particular period you have 78000 of demand but this data is skewed because of the seasonality factor so if the seasonality would not be there then what would have been your demand it just the average of it the average of these four is 19500 okay so it would have been the 19500 would have been the deseasonalized demand but it is not as simple as it sound so let's check out how we can calculate deseasonalized demand for the deseasonalized demand we need to know we need to know one thing that is periodicity and the periodicity is the number of period after which the seasonal cycle repeat so here in our case we know that the cycle of demand is repeating itself after four period so how you can check out your uh, demand repeat cycle there are various methods but the easiest method is a visualization you can just select this table and you can insert a line chart of it and you can check uh, for the period of 4 8 and 12 they are consistent hike and for period of 1 5 and 9 they are lows so by this visualizing also you can get a guess that okay if this particular demand has certain seasonality or not so when you calculate the periodicity then you will be averaging out that demand in the given period to calculate the deseasonalized demand so there are two cases if the value of p is odd let's say in this particular example it is 3 and we have let's say demand like this so if we are going to average out our demand in order to calculate the deseasonalized demand so it will be calculating it for the middle of it when you are trying to averaging out it will be calculating for the period 2 what would be the your average demand for this whole period as and when you are going forward you will be averaging out for all the three period because you have a periodicity of 3 but if you have a periodicity which is even the case became a bit complicated let us check out how we can calculate in case of even so here if your p value is even let's say in this case it is 4 so you are going to calculate the average of the 4 in this case when you are going to calculate the average of this 4 the value which you will be getting which is 25 will be somewhere between 2 and 3 because this is the data for the period of 2.5 but the period of 2.5 we do not have we want either a data for period 2 or for the period 3 so in that case what we will be doing we will be calculating the average of another period which is start from period 2 to period 5 which is from 20 to 50 and take a average of it and then we take the average of both which is the average from 10 to 40 plus average from 20 to 50 by doing this we will be able to get the deseasonalized demand for the period number 3 so what we are doing we are doing the sum for period 1 demand and period 5 demand once and doing the sum for period of 2 3 and 4 twice and doing a average of it so the same formula which we are using here that c45 which is this one plus c46 which is this one and summing up 20 30 and 40 which are d45 to 545 and multiplying it by 2 divided by 8 because we are taking a average for all these eight numbers 
the question may arise that why we cannot take from 10 to 50 and take an average of it it might give us the number for 30 but we cannot do it because you have a periodicity for 4 only so for the first periodicity cycle your average demand and then for your second periodicity cycle your average demand get some and divided by 2 will give you the deseasonalized demand for your period number 3 you cannot get this demand in 2 because you will not be able to complete the periodicity cycle if it would have been 3 then you will be able to because the first second and third you will be able to get it but your periodicity is 4 then it has to take the 2 period before and 2 period after it hope you understand so let's go to the upside so here what we did we did the same because we have a periodicity is 4 we calculate the d3 and d7 once and then multiply the sum of d4 to d6 by 2 and divided the whole sum by the 8 so this is how you are getting your deseasonalized demand thus you can do it till period 10 because for the period 11 you do not have the demand for period 13 which will be required so you will be having a deseasonalized demand from period 3 to period 10 so now you can see how it has been changed so how the data has been changed was the difference between the actual demand and the deseasonalized demand can be seen here if you select these two data and insert a, a line chart yeah you will be able to see that the blue one is your actual demand and the orange one is your deseasonalized demand so your deseasonalized demand is removing the seasonality fluctuation and try to give a more linear relation with the time so that you can go ahead with the regression so now we have our deseasonalized demand so we are ready to do a regression analysis on this so for that we will be going to the solver data tab and go to the data analysis select a regression and select on ok for the y range we will be taking on ok you will be getting the regression result in this particular form so here if you analyze the regression result you will be getting that you are getting an intercept value as 18439 and your x variable value is 524 if you put these value in your deseasonalized demand equation it will look like this that your deseasonalized demand is equal to 18439 plus 524 times of your time so now we have an equation for our deseasonalized demand which is dependent on time so now we can calculate our new deseasonalized demand so if you put the value of t as 1 you will get the 18963 as a deseasonalized demand for period number 1 the same way you will be able to get the deseasonalized demand for all the 12 periods after getting the deseasonalized demand for all your periods it's time to calculate the seasonal factor because till now we have calculated the level which is 18439 the trend which is 524 which is a value of slope in this particular line equation the third factor which is remained is the seasonality factor to calculate a seasonality factor it's very easy process in which you just need to divide your actual demand divided by the seasonality demand it will give you the coefficient by which the actual demand has been multiplied in the deseasonalized demand for this in the column g what we are doing we are just dividing the actual demand divided by the deseasonalized demand and we are getting our seasonal factor for each of our period so keep remember we have a periodicity of 4 so if you see that the period 1 and period 5 have somewhat similar or somewhat near value of their periodicity the same way whenever the demand cycle is repeating we have somewhat near seasonal factor so now you have three value for a particular period in a demand cycle so now we need to finalize the value of a seasonality factor so the data sample which we have we have it for the 12 periods in which we are experiencing three demand cycle so if you see that this is the first demand cycle 
this is the second one and this is the third one and against each period we have our seasonality factor so to conclude on a one single seasonal factor we are going to average out all the seasonal factor which are falling over the same period within a cycle in this particular cycle this is a period one which is uh, 0.42 and again the demand drop to 10,000 and this is the again your periodicity start from period 5 it is 47 and then after 4 period your demand cycle repeat and again you are getting a seasonality factor of 52 so you are going to take average of all the seasonality factor which are falling on the same stage in a repeating demand cycle so now after doing the average out we know that in a particular demand cycle we have four periods and for those all four periods we have four seasonal factor now so now it's time to calculate the final forecast as we know we have the seasonal factor right up here we know we have our deseasonalized demand value and our trend value in the starting of this example we know that our equation of calculating forecast is this one so what does it say it says that let's say for calculating the forecast for 13th period because we have a data till 12th period so for calculating the forecast for 13th period you need to have level plus 13 which is t plus 1 means 12 plus 1 multiply by trend which is 524 and the sum of this should be multiplied by seasonality factor for that demand cycle so this is the first seasonality factor of the demand cycle because we have a periodicity of four period so this is the first seasonality factor in the demand cycle which is 0.47 so here we can see that uh, for the f13 we are calculating 18,439 plus 13 multiplied by 524 and the sum of this multiplied by 0.47 which gives you the forecast of 11,868 so this is how you can calculate the forecast for the period 14, period 15, period 16 and so on so this is how you can calculate your upcoming forecast on Excel based model Hope you are able to understand this method. If you have any question or concern, do comment in our comment section. We will be taking out adaptive demand forecasting in our coming videos. Till then, like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Thank you.